Hi guys, hello gorgeous. Back with another real talk. This one is requested by good brother Cameron Johnson from the Patreon tribe. And I just wanted to start out by thanking the entire Patreon tribe. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. You're not just contributors, supporters, you're my friends. And uh, none of this happens without you. None of it would have happened and none of it can continue to happen without you. So uh, thank you so much for caring and for uh, for being a part of this. Uh, Cameron asked uh, me to do a real talk a while back on how to stay creatively motivated. And he's got another great uh, request for another real talk uh, on how to deal with uh, tough times in your life, how to deal with uh, challenges, ways to stay positive, uh, whether you're going through challenges at work or in life. And I like to do these real talks down by the Grand River in Kitchener because uh, it just feels like that's where the answers are. And uh, they don't feel like they are so much coming from me, but just flowing through me, through uh, the river and everything that's around it. But uh, for this real talk, I thought I would have it come from uh, where where my answers come from. This is my little workout area in my house. Uh, so I thought that would be a lot more fitting. Plus, <laughs> there's a lot of snow down by the Grand River. Uh, so it's not going to be exactly a warm, fuzzy uh, atmosphere down there. It's going to be a little chilly for a bit. But uh, this is where I do the work of my life. And one speech, one message that was very inspiring to me was from a, a gentleman formerly known as Jim Helwig. And one day he had the audacity to say, I'm gonna choose my own name because uh, the name uh, that I was given doesn't have, uh, doesn't inspire me as much as the name I've chosen for myself. And this guy like, really did live life as a warrior. And he did this great speech. Uh, he, he was answering a similar question. How do I deal with these things that pop up in my life? And uh, he's, he was usually a very loud, rambunctious, intense guy. But uh, I think it was one of the loudest statements he ever made, which was ironically very, very quietly made. And he just somberly, quietly said, do the work. Do the work. Uh, so the gist of the message I want to share today about this is if you're dealing with stuff at work, you need to remind yourself, these are just things that I've done for myself in the past, uh, remind yourself that that isn't the work of your life. That's a job to pay the bills, uh, to uh, pay for food, um, everyday necessities. But that's not the work of your life. Um, that That's a job. The work of your life is doing things to keep yourself um, happy, positive, enthusiastic, optimistic. And I can, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for everybody, but, uh, these are habits that I have picked up from other people who said, Hey, it worked for me. Uh, and you should always try two different ways. Uh, if one way doesn't work, you need to stop trying to make it work and try something else and see if that other method will work for you. Uh, trying to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. Everybody knows that. So if you are sedentary, if you never do anything active ever, if you don't even go for walks and you feel miserable, then you have to try something different. You have to get up. You have to get out. You have to walk around a bit. And, uh, I feel like I've said this a lot of times just to people uh, face to face, probably in some videos too, but you don't have to become this guy right here, Mr. Universe. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. This is the message that I'm always sharing in, in all of my uh, collectible uh, videos. Uh, it goes for comics, movies, it goes for everyone. You don't have to be an all or nothing person. You don't have to feel like you have to look like that. And if you can't look like that, What's the point? Why even bother just sit on a couch or lay in bed all day long? If being sedentary isn't working for you, you need to move. You need to sweat. And 
Uh, I, I don't uh, have many quotes up around in my house, but this is a very powerful quote that uh, I want to read for you because it reminds me every single day I go into my gym area to do the work. It says, <laughs> maybe I should do it in Arnold's voice, but for, um, for emphasis, for the somberness and the power, I, I won't do the Arnold voice, but he says, a well-built physique is more than vanity. It shows discipline, dignity, and dedication. It requires patience, passion, and self-respect. It cannot be bought, stolen, or inherited. It cannot be held onto without constant work. And that is a good reminder. And it reminds me every single day that you can buy a lot of stuff that makes you happy, but you can't buy. He calls it a proper physique, a good physique. It's not about physique. It's not about looking fantastic in a bikini or in a bathing suit. Um, it's about feeling good. And I believe with every fiber of my being, and when the fibers turn to dust and blow away, I will believe with every floating particle of whatever is left, energy, every um, volt of energy that's left, I will always believe in body, mind, and soul, always. And it's a trinity. And if one is weak, the other two will suffer. You can't just be a meathead and work out all day and never feed your mind, never think philosophically, never read anything that has some substance to it. It doesn't work. You're missing one of the three. You can't just be feeding your mind and, and doing the the things that make you spiritually healthy, meditation, positive thought, optimism. You can't just do those two and never move and never get up. It just, I don't see how it works because we are physical beings. There's no way around that. No matter how enlightened you think you are, no matter how in control of your thoughts and your emotions you are, we are physical beings. You will cease to exist if you stop drinking water. That's just that's how it is. There's no way around it, no matter how much you want to debate. If you stop eating food, you will cease to exist. If we are physical beings that require food and water, nourishment, then we also require certain level of physical activity in order to remain healthy. And uh, not just healthy in the body, but healthy in the mind and healthy in the spirit too. And you can't just try to feed your mind be a try to be an intelligent thoughtful aware person mindful be in fantastic shape be like a marathon runner uh and and not be spiritual um i mean that's that's a whole other debate that, that's a that's a topic that i don't have the energy anymore to to debate uh and i'm not talking about religion i'm talking about spirituality but just a different other level and tangible and uh, it's not something that can be explained. But uh, being physical has been a, a major key in my attitude. So uh, I've mentioned it uh, a couple of years ago probably. I don't bring it up all that often. Um, but I had a really bad shoulder injury. And that changed everything. Um, so it's a really tough thing to deal with uh, when you're basically crippled in your 30s when uh you know that's not supposed to happen until your 60s or 70s when you see those old timers oh my back oh my knee is out my hip that was me in my 30s uh i i couldn't raise my arm anymore uh, i couldn't grip things i was dropping things all the time still do um but i've i've seen what happens when i do my physiotherapy every single day and i've also seen and felt and remember what happens when i didn't do my physiotherapy when it was just too much pain, too much time, too much patience required. And uh, it I won't go back to it. I won't go back to the, the days where I would go days or weeks uh, without doing physical therapy. So that's another important part of the physical aspect of it. Know your limits. Learn your limits. You can't know them until you learn them. So maybe the expression instead of know your limits should be learn your limits. Do the work and actually explore, be adventurous, and try to learn your limits. And I learned mine. I found out what I couldn't do anymore with my bad arm. Uh, and I started to learn my limits of, 
of my injured arm and this is one of the things and you can see all of the covering of this has been worn off from the thousands of times that I've uh, done my physiotherapy exercises with it doing small circles on the wall that's one of the things that'll actually sharpen your mind too because when you go from being able to do anything physically without any thought or concentration to not being able to actually uh, use one of your limbs without real serious focus um, you, you go and you grab things with your hands and all the time without even thinking you grab a pen you grab a coffee whatever but imagine if it was almost like a like a robotic prosthetic and you have to concentrate lift forward a little to the right a little to the left grip and that's what happens uh, sometimes with those types of injuries where you have to do physiotherapy to gain something back you'll never get to a hundred percent uh, but the, the real courage is in trying to gain something back and get some level of use out of it. So I use my ball and I use uh, my rubber hose and that's fine. Uh, I've learned that that's my new limits with, with my particular uh, injury. Uh, and I've learned to really accept the rubber hose, the use of it. It's a safe thing to do physiotherapy with. It's not like curling you know really heavy weights and you might re-injure if something is uh is wrong with you or even if you don't have any injuries you could cause yourself a first injury by pushing yourself too hard but a rubber hose is is a great way to just push your body a little bit work up a little bit of a sweat and the big point to all of this is that it releases endorphins uh, the body creates natural things so yeah a lot of people need coffee to get going in the morning and they feel like they need it to focus and concentrate but uh, our bodies are really incredible incredible creations and there are a lot of amazing things reactions that happen in it when we do certain things when certain criteria are fulfilled really magical things happen so on my channel I talk about the magic of characters and and some of the adventures they were on we are magical creatures if we would just take a closer look and entertain the idea that maybe just maybe we are magical ourselves and these incredible things can happen and it is just as simple as going to your little workout space or whatever doing some sort of workout on your carpet uh, pushing ourselves and rewiring ourselves to not dread sweat and instead recognize it as that's the key right there you're on the right track you're doing the work of your life and it it won't feel like it in that moment that's the catch this is the tricky part right in that moment everything is not fixed the world is not perfect and sunshine and rainbows in that moment but two days, three days, four days, every day from that point on, the darkness, the dread, the heaviness, the weight is not there and you don't think about it because you don't think about things that aren't bothering you anymore. How many people dwell on a past very stressful situation and sit there and go, oh, that was so stressful, I was so stressed. I'm sure a lot of uh, content creators on YouTube right now are, are going through that right now. And when this all passes uh, in a year, two years, five years, when it's a distant memory, and then there's another challenge that feels even bigger, most people won't sit there and go, oh, that whole COPPA thing in 2019, oh my, you don't, you don't dwell on past challenges. You work through it, you get through it, and you move on to the next thing. So in order to move on, you have to move. These are very simple answers in life that I've learned from other people. Um, good friend of mine named Lance Nielsen, brilliant musician, wrote a song once called Simplify. And the lyrics go, simplify, redefine, and free your mind. And that's what it's all about. You have to just change the way you think about certain things, especially if you're not much into working out. You need to change the way you think about it and instead of dreading it you need to be hungry for it 
It needs to be like that holy grail that you've been searching for, for all those years. Your work at out area needs to be your holy grail. And I can honestly speak from past experience. Um, I've, I've been through a lot of very, very tough challenges. And uh, when I was going through one of them, my wife and I were going through one of them, uh, we joined a gym that day uh, because we believe so strongly that in order to get through it, you can't just sit and ponder and wonder and think it out. You have to sweat it out. You have to walk it out. You have to move it out. And so we joined a gym so that we could do that and be surrounded with people who were, who were doing that as well, who were pushing and uh, fighting, basically fighting for their happiness, their peace of mind and their joy. So if you're able to afford a gym, uh, I would highly recommend joining one, at least for a short period of time, because that's what we did. We joined one for a short period of time just to be immersed in like a temple of work, of actual physical sweat and work. And uh, we couldn't afford that uh, indefinitely, but it was long enough so that we could move that discipline, which is talked up here, uh, talked about up here, we could move that discipline from the gym to our own little workout area. And that mindset has stayed with us. So um, might be tough for people who have never really been physical in their life. But uh, for the ones who have been in the past, you know, you remember. And you know that you need to do the work again. You need to get back to it so that you can deal with these things. If you're weak in body, mind, and spirit, body, mind, and soul, everything is going to be... an an insurmountable challenge it just can't be overcome if you're strong if you're honed if you're sharpened if you're intense in body mind and soul then everything can be dealt with because your attitude will just be I've dealt with worse uh, I'm being asked a lot about the changes coming to YouTube and um, I guess I'll do a, a video talking about that at some point but uh, my feeling towards it is basically I've been through worse. I've been through much worse. Uh, and that's how I deal with all of these things that pop up. Uh, you have to ask yourself, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who is just affected by everything? Every single outside force and event that happens controls your mood. It decides if you're going to be upbeat or depressed, uh, sad, downtrodden that day? Or are you going to be the type of person who inhales toxic gases and breathes fire out? Which one do you want to be? If you want to be the latter, if you want to be that fire breathing dragon that is not affected, but just gets through everything, perseveres through everything, trudges on through everything, you got to do the work and the work is the actual physical work no matter what it is so uh, disclaimer for the the litigious society we live in I'm not a doctor you need to go see your own doctor you need to uh, develop your own workout regimen join a gym talk to a trainer and they'll help you find your limits um, but that's that's my uh, it's not a secret because I've heard it from hundreds of people. But that's my recommendation. It has worked for me. It continues to work for me. And uh, I don't really see why it would stop working. And as we get older, the, the one thing that I will uh, remind is that your limits decrease as you get older. So don't let that get you down. Instead, find your new limits. Redefine. Simplify. Redefine and then reach those limits every single day and uh, see how that works if the uh, the original method isn't working for you so uh, thanks Cameron for the suggestion uh, always enjoy talking about this kind of stuff and uh, I hope it helps uh, huge thanks to the patreon tribe you guys are awesome if uh, Folks out there who haven't uh, joined Patreon yet, if you're interested in contributing to the channel, uh, helping out, uh, and if you don't know anything about Patreon, 
Patreon is a place uh, kind of like Facebook or one of those other social media places, uh, Instagram, something like that. It's a place where you can post pictures, you can chat with other people. I can post videos and uh, and messages, pictures and stuff there too. Uh, but they have different contribution levels. So uh, if, if anyone's thinking I can't afford Patreon, they've got the wrong idea about Patreon. It's a very closed-minded uh, attitude towards Patreon because uh, the content creators who use it are allowed to specify what levels they want and I have a $1 level. So it, it doesn't cost $29.95 to join my Patreon. Uh, it's, it's a $1 a month at the very lowest level. And then uh, for people who are in different financial situations and they can contribute more, then there are more levels. You can actually give whatever you want. If you want to give $1.35 uh, I think you can just put that in there if you want. You don't have to follow anybody. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but for just a dollar, um, it means a lot because it's not just about the money. It's also about um, people saying, uh, I believe in you and I support you. Uh, so uh, the messages and the encouragement uh, always mean a lot to me. Uh, and uh, the fact that people have joined this Patreon page and they have created the community. Um, I, I appreciate and I'm very flattered that people say thank you for creating this community, but they created it. Uh, without them, it's just me sitting there posting and talking to myself. So they created it, they sustain it, they maintain it, they keep it positive. Uh, whenever someone new joins, uh, I post a welcome message welcoming, welcoming them and so many people also welcome them. Hi, they introduce themselves. We're making new friends here and we're using the internet the way it should have been used. Uh, there are some parts in the internet that are very toxic and uh, just not all that friendly. Uh, my uh, Patreon page is very classy. It's very mature and I love it. It's, it's the highlight of everything I do. It's my favorite place uh, on the internet to go and uh, I just every day feel very lucky that I have all those good brothers and sisters on there having fun and just being positive and helping and supporting each other. So uh, Cameron, good brother, I love you and uh, I, ho I hope you're doing well and uh, I hope this helps and uh, anything you need brother uh, just let me know and that goes for everyone else too. Um, I really pride myself on being the, the you know, the guy uh, who you can actually get a hold of. Uh, I try to answer uh, all of the the comments uh, if I you know get private messages and stuff like that, especially of a serious nature. Um, I'll always try to take a moment and, and help people because a lot of people have helped me throughout my life, and I believe in paying back. And if you can't pay it back, I believe in paying it forward, pay it forward five, ten, twenty times over. So. Uh, Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, good luck doing the work of your life. And Nerdmas Day.